Hello everyone, good morning. We are day two of our backyard treehouse hardware demonstration. Today I have my son Henry with me, who's gonna be my trusty assistant, and we're gonna work on the platform itself. Technically it's called the joist level. About where my hands are, we're gonna be putting joists up, not unlike where we left off with our paddle tab yesterday. In this case, we've got about a 10 by 10, we're gonna say, platform, and we're using two by eight joists. Now, I recommend that you go consult your span charts before you just pick two by eights. In this case, though, two by eight is the right size to span the distances that we're talking about. I'll get into the details of the plan itself, but just know that in general, when we're building tree houses, we place our joists, which are two by material, placed on edge, standing up, about 24 inches on center, every two feet, okay? And we're gonna march down this way until we get to the first tree, uh, and I'll give you some tips and techniques when we get there. So we're gonna begin with laying out our first joist. Henry's gonna help me out. And then we're gonna get into the technical side of cutting angles with the all important Swanson Speed Square. Don't be intimidated. It's gonna be real easy, easy peasy. So here we go, follow me. To review, this is the plan for our beam layout. We've got the three main trees, one, two, three. The fourth tree, we installed a paddle tab and we already have that joist that's running past tree three and sitting on that first beam. Now, it's always good to have a plan for your platform. And right here on this, table, I've got the platform plan. This is the joist layout, okay? These single lines represent the joists. In our case, two by eights. I've got eight 14 foot two by eights right over here. I use pressure treated because in the end, you're gonna often, at least in the Northwest, get a lot of moisture that's gonna sit there for a while. So I do recommend you use pressure treated joists and beams. And we're gonna just simply place them on top of the beam and then we're gonna roll them up on edge and we're gonna do the first process, which is the blocking in between. So this is what helps us keep these joists up and strong over the course of the next little bit while we build the platform, the blocking, okay? So Henry and I are gonna grab that first joist, in this case, this line represented here, and then we're gonna start rolling the rest of the joist and block as we go. Here's a question I get asked all the time. Trees grow at different rates. And so if we're building in multiple trees, what happens when you know, one tree grows faster than the other? There's good news in the answer here. Trees grow at their tips, right? Up at the top, at the branch tips. They only grow greater in girth. They get fatter every year. They don't grow up relative to the ground when you've got a pin in it like this tab. So it's really good news. We do not have to worry about trees taking the treehouse platform up every year. We just have to worry about the tree growing fatter every year. And this is why we like to place our structural members like the joists and the beams as well, as far from the bark as we can afford to. Rule of thumb, I go about six inches plus away from the bark of a tree. So that's what we've got here. If you wanna get six inches off of the bark of a tree, again, so the tree can grow over time and move around in the wind, then that pushes this joist only about 13 inches off that joist. That's okay. Better, it's stronger that way. So now you're gonna see, I'm gonna stay six inches off of this tree to allow for growth and movement. Um, these joists are now only 18 inches apart. That's pretty good. That is pretty darn good. And now when we think about two, and this is what's fun about building your own tree house, is you can kind of create on the fly too. This is exactly what happens every time. I wanna make sure that you know, we don't cantilever too far off the beam. In other words, you know, if you've got a beam that joist is gonna cantilever off that beam a certain distance. 
dealing with wood of this size, I would say three feet is as long as you want to cantilever off a beam like that. I'm going to show you what exactly three feet looks like. So, you know, you can, you can have a joist cantilever three feet without having, you know, there'll be a little bounce in it if you were standing out at the end of that, but that's about the limit right there, three feet. Okay.